Welcome back to the 90th minute. We are your hosts, myself, Liam, Waz, and Lucas. If you're new to the podcast, make sure you hit subscribe, like it, follow along wherever you may be. We have a lot to talk about today. Lots of transfers, lots of interesting little tidbits of information going to be coming your way. So make sure to comment down below and get involved in the conversation and uh, let's kick it off. I think we're going to start only in one place. I mean, Barcelona. Yeah, they seem to like the headlines these days. So yeah. we're going to start with Antoine Griezmann. Antoine Griezmann is officially moved from Atletico Madrid to Barcelona. Of course, this saga has gone on for a good chunk of the summer. I don't think anyone summer. likes him. We'll get on to that. We'll get on. Let's anymore. talk about the facts and the figures and money first off, and then we'll get into our opinions on it because I think we all are going to have slightly varied opinions on this deal. I, I have a feeling. But what was the uh, agreed upon transfer fee for him? Uh, there's nothing agreed. It was. Uh... <laughs> That's the thing. That's why I said agreed upon because. <laughs> Uh, this entire thing has been up in the air for months now. Apparently, Griezmann's lawyer submitted the 120 million euros for Griezmann's release clause, mm. which apparently that's the release clause that Barcelona were paying. Uh, and afterwards, a few hours later, he was officially announced as a Barcelona player. Mm -hmm. But there is some controversy with this because Atletico are saying that the first contacts with Griezmann and Barcelona were in March. <laughs> And during that time, his release clause was 200 million euros. Yeah. So I thought if Alfredo can get proof, maybe they have a case. Yeah, because basically July 1st was the new fiscal era for clubs across Europe. So Griezmann's transfer fee went from, release clause went from 200 million to 120 million. That's not why though. It's It was part of the contract that on July 1st it would draw. Yeah, yeah but July 1st is the day it changed. Yeah. Yeah, but... Yeah, so Barcelona, do they pay $120 million. They wait until July 1st to make that deal kind of thing. But yes, Atletico Madrid saying, well, no, you approached him during the previous uh, contract, the previous agreement. You should pay that amount. So this one will be settled out in the courts, basically. Um, if Atletico can get proof, obviously. If they can get proof. I and hope they do. <laughs> Honestly, I kind of do as well. Because Barcelona has this is just rather, like a very scumbag move. Rather Rude. It sounds to like Atletico. an episode of Narcos, but in the football yeah, world, kind of. It seems more like a soap opera to me. Yeah, it's been very interesting. You can make a movie out of this and replace it with that. What? Whatever he made last year. Blood decision. Blood decision. I'm, I'm staying. I'm staying. Wait, that I'm turning around. One year later. You should just make a sequel yeah, to that. Yeah, you should make another. Blood de 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 decision two. Part dose. <laughs> then more exciting as well. <laughs> um, but let's talk about this transfer. Let's talk about the implications now for both sides. For Barcelona, they do get a very good player, very accomplished, very, you know, he's won the World Cup. What does this bring to Barcelona for this next season? Well, obviously, it's a different option in attack. Mm -hmm. With Suarez maybe regressing and potentially not being at his best, they need a player to be able to score the goals and be creative. This would also help if Messi isn't in the lineup as well, because... Messi usually is the main focal point in creativity, mm -hmm. but if Messi isn't playing, Griezmann can do a pretty good job in being that creative outlet in the team. Do you see this switching the Barca formation to a false nine in a sense? Because I, I, I do, I do know uh, Griezmann does play striker, does play right wing at times, but to me, he's not like a striker, striker. He, he, he's a goal scorer. He's a center forward, but I don't know. To me, this is more of a false nine. Do you think probably Usman Dembele on the left, Messi on the right, and uh, Griezmann up through the middle? Well, you hope something like that. Maybe Messi and Griezmann switch. Maybe sometimes mm -hmm. in a game, like maybe 30 minutes, Griezmann plays through the middle, and yeah. then the rest of the game, Messi plays through the middle. A lot of interchanging and overlap. What if Neymar comes back? There is still a Neymar possibility, and I think we are going to get on to that because of his actions at per at uh, PSG. But overall, about Antoine Griezmann to Barcelona, do you like this move? No. I like the move, I just don't like the way it was done. Right? I don't like this move. I don't like it, because in a sense, it brings La Liga down a little bit. Because now, Barcelona take get another step forward, and I think this brings Atletico Madrid a decent step down. It could, but maybe this 
helps <clears throat> a follicle midget be able to balance their wages because Griezmann was making an excessively high wage. At yeah, uh, and this is a large chunk of money for them. So, yes, it will, you know, maybe now, I mean, I know they did sign Jao Felix for an incredible amount of money, but now this maybe can we can look at it and say, hey, maybe they can go and sign another center forward. Maybe they can go sign someone else that can strengthen their squad, right? Yep, they've already, I know they've lost uh, Lucas Hernandez as well as Rodri. A lot, good money leaving the club. So, I mean, now they got to replace those really good players. And they've been replacing them. They've yeah. been springing in players, potential players coming in as well. <laughs> And then another player, which we'll mention a little later, mm-hmm. who could be a great addition to the squad. But overall, what do you think was? What do you think this is going to be for Atletico Madrid? Do we think? Do you think they'll be title challengers in the Liga next season? No. I no, agree. I don't think so. I agree. I think I think they're taking uh, too many steps back. Uh, I don't know. It's kind of hard to say. Not hard to say. I mean, they lost also Godin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they've, they've been losing so many a good, lot players, of very so good players. Yeah, obviously, when know. there's a lot of changes to a squad, it takes a little more time to really become more of a cohesive unit yeah, and it's true. be able to build up to be a great team. Do you think potentially this is a opening for another club to finish top three in Spain? No, because Atletico Madrid, even with the players they've lost, they still bring in great players. They do, and are significantly better than Valencia. Mm. I, I agree, but I go, hey, maybe this is a, a slight opening for a Valencia, a Sevilla, a, someone else to come and say, hey, let's knock on that, that top three door for a little bit, you know? I think Simeone is too good probably, of a manager I, to let that happen. Probably. You know, this is a, still a very good club with a very good manager, and they should be fine. But uh, They finished ahead of Real Madrid the past yeah. two seasons. But let's now get each of our perspectives on this transfer and more importantly, on Antoine Griezmann. Do we like his involvement in this? No. Why not? Just, it's dumb. It's a joke. It is. He's a clown. He's turned he, into a clown. He, not only does he have the hair of a clown, he's a clown. Check out the 90th Minute on Instagram. Link's in the description. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about with hair of a clown. Oh, definitely. It's I a mean, joke. a lot of decision when now this. like, It's silly. You, just, you don't even see this. you don't even see Paul Pogba doing this. <laughs> Paul, <laughs> what do you think about this, Lucas? You're usually the, the level, calm-headed guy between us. Honestly, like I I love Griezmann as a player. I think he is one of the most talented players in the world. But how he's handled this was a little bit of a disgrace. Does this ruin his entire athletical reputation? Now? I think it ruins his whole legacy. His legacy is destroyed at Atletico Madrid. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when he comes back to play at the Wanda, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> get a, throw a pig head. Yeah, <laughs> like classic. Like the, uh, they have like those stars outside the stadium on the ground of uh, players that they consider great legends, icons. Yeah. Um, Griezmann is not an Atletico Madrid legend. No, he, he will never be considered a legend at the club. I mean, if you think about all the things he's done for the club, you know, lot the Champions League finals, you know, La Liga challenging for title races incredible goal scoring you know he has been probably one of the best players in the club's history but yeah his reputation his legacy his icon status is so diminished so wiped so disgraced that no fan in the one is going to welcome him back yeah. could have done it better should have done it better yeah if you want to go to barca fine if he's going to leave he should have just left last year or two yeah, years ago exactly no if you want to leave now okay fine you know but do it in a reputable way. Say, hey, I'm handing in a transfer request. I want to go to Barcelona. And you know what? I know the player doesn't have the last say or much of a say in this. But you know, say to Barcelona, listen, pay $150 million. Pay... $120. Well, no, but I say pay $150. You know, pay a little bit more just out of the respect. Say, hey, you know, this club is giving you their best player. I know that's not business. I know that's not a player's say. But to me... You know, be a bit respectful to the club. I don't think people who know about money would listen to Antoine Griezmann about spending thirty million no, more. But but you know what I'm saying though. You know, or, or you know, a sell-on clause, something. You know, sell. You know what I'm saying, Lucas. Be be respectful in the transfer sum that you're offering. Barcelona being respectful to other clubs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, not at all because this club's been a joke over the past few years with how they treat smaller clubs in their opinion. Like at Liverpool last year with Coutinho. <laughs> Coutinho, that's a funny joke oh. right there as well. That's 
talk about Coutinho. Sure. I mean, what because, do you want to say? Well, what does this do for him? I mean, his agent keeps saying that he's not going to leave the club, but there's also reports saying that PSG might be interested. I mean, I'm sure he doesn't want to leave the club because I'm sure he's getting lots of money. Plus, I do see a spot for him in this team. He is a fantastic player. He also hasn't lost his number seven shirt. He hasn't. Uh, Griezmann went for number 17 instead of seven, which... It's a bit of a sign almost that, hey, maybe Coutinho is going to stick around because I think he would have happily taken number seven. I feel like Barcelona need to sell players, though. <laughs> like, how are they going to keep spending? Like, I know they they keep getting loans and stuff. Yeah. They're Barcelona. They always find a way they to get the, money. They have to take out a $35 million loan. Like, what the heck? They just sign Griezmann? Like, what's your guys' financial situation? Oh, well, <laughs> that, that was revealed today. <laughs> The club is in debt of 888 million euros. Supposedly. Supposedly. That's incredible. But I think if you were to look at some of the major clubs across Europe, that would be more common than you think. Like, look at, remember Manchester United when the entire hashtag Glazers out thing, it was revealed the club was, I think, it was 700 million euros or 700 million pounds debt, something like that. You know, it's these big clubs are in financial despair almost. But because they're such big clubs, they can always seem to like keep themselves afloat by sponsorships or kit deals or this or that, right? And yeah. performing well in top competitions, which and like we under don't the do. table shady stuff. Yeah, I mean like if you guys keep, if Manchester United keep doing worse in big competitions. Yeah, if you it, don't make champions uh, don't like worry. next year. Don't worry, it's about to change. But are, I don't know, it's like keeps if these transfers don't work keep, like keep failing for Barcelona, mm -hmm. like how are they going to come back to, from this? Like, I mean, Coutinho is one that could definitely move on. I think Usman Dembele, this will be a very telling season for him if he can really solidify his spot in the starting eleven. He's a brilliant young player, but never seemed to live up to hundred percent of his potential. I mean, injuries have hampered him throughout the seasons, but yeah, this will be a big year for him. To see if he can keep it, like really solidify his starting eleven spot. Barcelona to have. Three of the top six most expensive transfers in history. Yeah. So, yeah, obviously, they're, I think they're likely to win La Liga. They have the best team on paper. They've won in the past handful of years. I, but then again... I might disagree with that. You think they have the best team on paper? Yeah. Real Madrid are not a bad starting oh, order. No. The thing about Real Madrid is that, like, the cohesion, like... The, a lot of new faces coming in. Are they going to adapt straight away? It didn't ha happen like that in 08, 09 when yeah. the big money transfers happened. That took time. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna put money or anything on La Liga right now because I think it's gonna be a very close race. But don't don't count out Madrid. You know Hazard's oh, a big sign. He's a guy that can change a, a season. Of course not. I would never count out Real Madrid, but. Luka Jovic is a brilliant player. Like, I think they got like 60-something points last season, and then trying to get 90 next year, that would be quite a significant yeah. jump. Uh, but, again, I would, back I would, in the I would like to see a uh, La Liga Champions League final. I know you wouldn't, but I the think... El Clasico final? Yeah. I mean, I mean... It's never happened before, so you know what? That, I, that's I, something I would, I would that like would, to see that. that. Would, what, arguably the biggest rivalry in sports, right? Arguably. I said arguably, but... Arguably. Whenever, whenever those... Uh, El Clasico finals were, are supposed to happen. It never happens. No, mm -hmm. it's never happened. But it would be a it would be a very interesting final. It had yet another level of. I mean, there's interest there's been it. an all German final. I can't. Yeah. There's been all Madrid final. That's true. Yeah. But there's never there's never been Real Madrid versus Barcelona, the you know the kings of Spain. Yeah, the kings of Europe, almost. You know. Yeah, I mean Liverpool have something to say about that, but <laughs> I mean, but <laughs> Real Madrid is the one the English king side. Of Europe, but... Let's talk about another big money transfer that's uh, on the cards. Was you're a Manchester United fan. <laughs> yes. This is way too much Do money. you actually like this transfer? Rumor? I do. Harry rumor, Maguire, it's happening. It's a rumor at the moment. I think it's happening. Harry Maguire is rumored to have agreed upon a deal to Manchester United for 80 million pounds. It's too much money. It's 40 million pounds too much money. That's what we have to do now. It's... Honestly, yeah, you it's, have to overspend. We have to overspend to get these good players because they Lester, know. Lester, yeah. know we have money. They're going to take advantage of us. Lester, know you don't have Champions League. You don't have much hope in this squad right now. Yeah, and a lot of people are wondering, like, can we 
Isn't there like any other cheaper center backs we could have signed for like maybe the same there quality? Is, but I mean, I, I think there is, but maybe that's gonna maybe lack of that's United's fault on lack of scouting. Yeah. Um. So supposedly this transfer is sixty million up, up, up front, front or and, and then twenty million in bonuses, add-ons and whatnot. But I like, obviously you gotta overspend. Yeah. People were laughing at Liverpool when they signed Van Dyke. Look at him now. Do you really think Van Dyke and Harry Maguire are comparable, though? Not really, but it's... Not at the moment, at least. You know what? I don't... A lot of people are slagging off Maguire because he apparently had a poor season with Leicester. Is, my thing is, okay. But he's better than Phil Jones Hold and Chris on. Smalling. Hold on. Here's the biggest thing. What's the rumored transfer fee for DeLitt? Like 75 million euros or 70 million euros? So you're telling me these two guys are physically and financially comparable <laughs> yeah it's, it's delete has everything that mcguire has physically add in ball playing and intelligence like harry mcguire made a world cup semi-final i mean yeah so it wasn't just yeah him. but i mean it's it's hey, what, what hey, we need we need you do we need you, to start somewhere you yeah. need a good solid center back and you know what honestly you that's need a good Mc, solid uh, english center back. it kind of so you gotta start somewhere and i think mcguire's he's he's to me it's a good signing just the wrong price oh yeah. but you have to pay that price for english talent because it's becoming a premium for 100%. the top one plus and, we're and in the europa league exactly they don't have the champions league draw they don't have a draw for hey let's go win a title because you know what? They're not going to win a title next year or in the next few years. I don't care what you say. Aaron Juan Basaka is <laughs> not going to be a, a title deciding signing. You're right. It's not that, a Van Dyke. That, that would be uh, Bruno Fernandez if that happens. Hey, go get him. I really He'll hope that happens. He'll pay $300 million for him, but go Probably, get him. I, I would love to see that happen. But It's interesting. You guys are signing British players, though, like yeah. McGuire. But that's Osaka. what United always have. They've always had good British talent. We're the opposite of Man City. That's yes. why we have more titles than them. I mean, yes. Yeah. <laughs> they have more titles hey. in the last five years. That's so. okay. We'll we'll be back soon enough. Okay. How many how many Champions League titles do they have? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> twenty times. Twenty times. I like to live in the past. <laughs> That's not a good thing. Bring back Van Persie. The two of you are both living in the past, but he's he's got his, his glory days back. Yeah. So overall, let us know what you think about this transfer. All the transfers. Yeah. Obviously, this means that. Uh, uh, Leicester need a new center back. Yeah. And they're willing to spend, supposedly, I don't know if this is from a good source, but $40 million on Lewis Dunk. I mean, Dunk is a good center back. I liked him when I watched him play against Man City. I thought he was a very, Oh, I remember very, that match. He was a fantastic. He was, he was a great was performance. Solid. Yeah. That's a player United could actually could have yeah. signed and be better than Phil Jones or my only Chris Smalling. My, my only concern about this is Lewis Dunk is used to playing on a, a lower block, like a deep per defensive line yeah so they're used to having uh playing as a unit mm -hmm. how is he gonna work with a brendan rogers system where they're gonna have to be higher up the field because against the majority of the teams in the league they're gonna play more of a possession type style or more of an attacking style if i'm honest i'm just very very excited to watch leicester next year yeah i'm, I'm very excited. You're, you're just a big leicester fan i i honestly <laughs> am i do like leicester but They've made some good signings. They've got some great young players coming through. I mean, Jamie Vardy. Jamie Vardy's still having his party. And, you know, Brendan Rodgers, you know, I'm still upset that we lost him, but he's a fantastic manager. Yeah, he you do wonders there. It's going to got Neil Lennon back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, but I'm excited for Harry Maguire. Harry Maguire. Yeah. And the season is in less than four weeks, so. And the transfer window closes in less than a month Hurry up now. and sign Bruno Fernandez. Get it over the line. Yeah. Give someone to play with Pogba in the midfield. Well, I'm, I was trying to figure out what a Manchester United starting 11 might look like next season. I mean, back line, if you do get Maguire, probably be Maguire and Smalling center back pairing. I don't know. I think Lindelof. Lindelof, potentially. I think Lindelof's uh, a bit better. Left back would be Luke Shaw. Right back would be Aaron Juan Bissaka. Yeah. Up top, I would have. Do you have Lukaku or is he on the move out? I don't think we have him. I think you're going to have Marcus Rashford instead. You have Rashford, yeah. Martial, and Sanchez? No. Daniel no. James. Daniel James, the last. Do you think he's going to start? Oh, I hope so. Did you see him against Perth Glory? <laughs> I, I Fantastic. did not, I'm going to be honest. Oh my god. Know. Man United fans were hailing him on uh, So you, th you think he will start over I, the likes I, of Lingard and Sanchez? I think he's better than Lingard already. 
Fair enough. Would we, you play Lingard through the middle, though? or th- on Well, the that's why I was going to move into the Maybe midfield yeah. now. You've got Pogba. I think if he's going to stay at United, he's 100% guaranteed a starting spot. Do you start Matic? Or maybe a potential new signing, I don't know. Or, or the Tahith Chong. I would love to see Tahith Chong. He, he played pretty well that also. That guy, to me, is the epitome of just ball and I think, football. I think, it's, <laughs> I think this might be the season we see United's youngsters break through. And, they you know, kind of have to start. You know, I, I think, there, I, there was a man many years ago that said, "You don't, you can't win anything without kids." You can't. Or what? What, what was it? You can't win with kids. You'll never win with kids, and uh, I think we might prove that wrong this yeah. season again. I mean, it's not. I think a lot of teams have proven you can win with younger players. Look, I'm well, sorry, but if we have our youngsters playing, we're going to win the title. Jesus, I'm no, kidding. But, you know, I, I look at United. You know, they on paper at least have a very, very decent starting eleven, and you know the bench is terrible either it's just if all of the jigsaw pieces can kind of fit together and, and work out i mean i think your goal for this season for united would be a top four finish yes i think we can get top four that'd be kind of your I, goal. Th- I think we'll finish fifth but i think top four we can do especially with chelsea um, being able to sign players yeah. arsenal you never know with them but well let's talk about arsenal quickly first of oh. all i just want to say um Daniel James shining for MUFC. I'm not one for premature hyperbole, but I'm just glad that a player has finally emerged who ends the Messi versus Ronaldo world's best full footballer debate. I, it, Classic United fans getting just a tiny bit ahead of themselves. Now, I'm not I, one to overreact or anything, but I'm pretty sure that Daniel James is the best footballer player in the world. Fair enough. <laughs> this is what preseason does to Yeah, people. playing his Perth glory. <laughs> 2 0 victory. No, no, no disrespect to Perth glory, but. It's Perth glory. <laughs> Just quickly on Arsenal. Yeah, comedy uh, club. What? Comedy club. That absolute joke of a club. But they did make a twenty-five million pound offer for Celtics left back Kieran Tierney. We rejected it because you know the Good. lad's worth Good. like fifty. Good. Do the, you're doing what Leicester's doing? Well, I mean, the way I look at it is, if Celtic are offered thirty, thirty-five million from, they'll take it because. That's huge money for us. At least, at you know, our our record, our record ever selling is twenty million, which was last season. Musa Dembele, um, it'd, be, it'd be huge money for us. But I think Tierney wants to stay because he's a Celtic fan. He wants to stay for ten in a row. I don't know, man. Ten in a row is huge, Lucas. It never happened before. The Premier League money. Trust me, the guy deserves to be playing the Premier League. He's a great player. He deserves the money. He deserves the praise. He deserves the spotlight. But to a local Scottish guy who is a Celtic fan. Ten in a row is worth more than you think. Never happened before. It's it's kind of like the fairy tale. If if either Celtic or Rangers can win ten domestic titles in a row, you're forever like the best kind of thing. I would think if you've won the European trophy. You're... Well, I mean, yes, we have, but you know, we're have Rangers won a European trophy? No, God, no. Not even the Europa League. They won the European Cup Winners Cup back in whoever knows, but uh, no. can Tierney also play center back? No. No? Because I've heard he can play left-sided center back. Not that I've ever seen. I mean, he can play left back. He can play left wing back. I mean, he probably could play left center back in a pinch, but he's not great in the air. He's more of on the floor, you know, winning the ball mm-hmm. and moving forward. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, Arsenal, only one signing, and it was a, a Brazilian mm-hmm. player from, like, yeah. a lower league. So, um, are you concerned about them? Well, I mean, they're talking about eighty million for uh, for Zaha, which is nuts. And then also Pepe. Yeah, Nicholas Pepe. And it, I saw a tweet, and it was so you know refreshing to me. It said, "If Nabil Fakir is going to Real Betis for how much was it? Thirty million. Thirty million. And they're saying Zaha is worth eighty million." That's what's wrong with the Premier League. Because it's, <laughs> it's the truth. Nebil Fakir is, I think, probably technically better than Zaha. I, I like Zaha as a player. He's very good and very exciting. But is he technically the most adept player? There's also There are also different type of players. And Nabil Fakir ha- does have problems with injuries. As supposedly he... There's times where he can't train for a handful of weeks because of his knee. And then he has... To- yeah, his knees must be shot if he's going to Real Betis. I mean, Real Batiste is a nice place. A great place to play football. 
great play style, great fans. Let's be real, Liam. If uh, Real Batista offered you a contract, would you go? God, yes. <laughs> like, that's not even a question. I'm playing Tier 4 in Edmonton. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. Nabil Fakir is wearing a Liverpool jersey last year. He's being rumored to go to City. That's true. He's being rumored to go to... Uh, I, it looks, I guess clubs. maybe uh, Liverpool is no longer interested in him. No, because obviously he has injury issues. Yeah. You know, his knees are I don't think, gone. I don't think Jurgen Klopp really wants to deal with that. No, Jurgen Klopp is trying to build a young team that can run for 120 minutes, not for 45. Yeah. Hopefully he does well. Do you, you subscribe to the Liverpool fa- uh, YouTube channel? I watch some of their videos. I'm not subscribed. I'm not subscribed, but I, I sometimes watch their own my recommended uh, James Milner is one of the oldest people in your squad. Yes. The guy can run for years. Yep. <laughs> He's incredible. <laughs> like the guy can just do lap after lap There's a lot of people lap. out there that slag off uh, James Milner, but He's fantastic. He's pretty good. I He's mean, very good. He's so. Like, I read comments about him. He's like, oh, well, you know, it's better than James Milner. I'm like. The guy can play probably better than you. The guy can play almost any position. Yeah, he's he's always puts in a great shift. He's always a hard worker. Yeah. Obviously, he's getting slower and he's losing some agility. Yeah. And he's stuff. won a couple titles here and there. He's won, <laughs> like, honestly, League. He's won Premier Leagues. We're getting a bit off topic. Yes, yeah, sorry. Let's get back to the transfers. Uh, Let's talk about Neymar. Yeah. He didn't show up to PSG training. Which is fair because he was doing some charitable work. So that's was fine. he? Yes. What was that's, he doing? That's what I heard. Uh, it was something with related to. Uh, something with Red Bull or something? So one of his charitable organizations. So he's helping the kids from our Lovely, heard. but he was fined. Was it 375 million euros? Well, shame on like PSG that. for not letting him do charitable work. That's basically just like a week of his paycheck. So he doesn't really Yeah, care. he's probably already made it back. Oh, 100%. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, there's talk, oh, is this him trying to force his way to Barcelona? Although he was making comments about uh, Barcelona's victory over PSG. Many moons ago. Yeah, this is the best sporting moment or something like no, that. No, it's the best locker room moment. Yeah. In his, his I, career. I think the Neymar to Barcelona is still on the cards, but I think it's a very, very... I kind of hope he rumor. goes to Barcelona. Really? Because I feel... I don't know. I think he... he it, it, when it was like MSN, it felt so good. It was it was, it was was a nice partnership, and we that's got, what that's what Neymar did. We got... Uh, what was it? MSG now. Well... <laughs> I mean, who do you think is more of a scumbag at this point? Neymar or Griezmann? I know you don't like either. Scumbag? Griezmann. Money hungry? Neymar. Like, and like, another problem with with Griezmann is that Suarez and Messi don't really like him too much. I mean, if you can perform on the pitch, then the relationships will be set aside. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know, I think Neymar should go back. He's... He's not gonna help PSG win the Champions League at this point. They're... You never know. He's been always he's always been injured in the. Important I, I know, games I know. Them. Which which kind of sucks. I like watching Neymar play except for the diving, but. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's kind of to protect himself. He just kicks the ankles a lot. I mean, I would too. If I had the chance to kick Neymar, I'd kick him as hard as I could. Yeah, he would have a. Tr- I gotta be honest with you, Lucas. You get a red card. He wouldn't no. get. I mean, he wouldn't get past me. I mean, <laughs> if if I'm completely honest, if I went to go make a tackle on Neymar. He would skin me, and he'd be so far gone, I wouldn't be anywhere close to him. But... Uh, unlike Waz. Yeah, well, yeah, sure. <laughs> if I had a chance to leave something on him, I'd leave something on him. Would you do a two-footed tackle? No. Just make your first ca- your first tackle count. I'm, I'm telling you, he, what's, what's he wouldn't next? stand a chance against uh, Mr. Dunk. <laughs> sure. Who's heading Leicester. Sure. What's next on our, our list, Lucas? Uh, uh, well, I guess we might as well talk about James Rodriguez. James. So there was rumors a long a while ago that he was going to Napoli. Now there's strong rumors that he might actually be going to Atletico Madrid. I mean, he is technically a Real Madrid player. He's on their, you know, he's back after his loans. <clears throat> Atletico Madrid would be an interesting spot for him. He would kind of, would he replace Griezmann? No. He's more of a further back in the midfield. He's more of a, he can play like attacking midfielder, wide player. He's pr- Pretty versatile, to be honest. He is. And you know what? I think he's the guy that they could use. Because he can pop up with the goals. Now, one thing I find interesting if this happens, it just seems to me that Real Madrid... I mean, Atletico Madrid have a lot better relationship with their city rivals than Barcelona. Yeah, something that you never thought would ever happen. But, I mean... 
No one likes Barcelona. I don't think Barcelona likes anyone else. I mean, they're they're just they're equal almost. Okay, and then let's quickly mention about De Litt. We is it going to finally I'm happen so this week? I, I think it's going to happen soon enough. But I'm so tired of it. Really? I, I don't know. This, well, this it's been bottom. going on now for almost two months. Where's he going to be? Is it going to be Barcelona? Well, we know he's, PSG. he's basically is it going to be Juventus. Be, uh, Manchester United. Juventus. Is it going to be Juventus? Because I think that's the only team in the running still. But how much? What's the? How, how do they pay for him? All the financial questions are still being asked. But it'll be over the line, I'd say, hopefully by next week. Hopefully. <laughs> All right. I'm so tired of it. It's funny because um, if they sign the lid, do you think they're still going to win the Serie A? Why would they not? If well, Mr. Jose Mourinho believes Inter will win if they're, Scudetto. If they're strengthening their squad, why would they not win Serie A? I've seen, I don't know, I think the the Italian teams have uh, strengthened their size. They have, more. the Italian teams uh, got think... much better. It'll be more of a title race. It'll be a bit more closer than last season. I don't think it'll be Inter. I think it'll be Napoli. I mean, Inter's been making s- yeah, Inter, good Inter, signs. Yeah, Inter... I mean, they signed Godin, who's kind of aging, but he's still a top center back. Past his best. I mean, you better than Harry Maguire. <laughs> they signed for cheaper, too. They have Antonio Conte, one of the best managers That's in true the world. Also, yeah, I love Antonio. Don't get me wrong. They've signed some... They signed Barella, who is one of the most yeah. promising Italian prospects. Yeah. Uh... But the they, only they, only issue they have issues up top because who's going to be their striker next season? Is it going to be Icardi or Lukaku? Yeah. Not bad options, I'm going to be honest. But, but Icardi is causing a lot of problems. Apparently, he said that he won't go anywhere. He's going to if he if they're not going to play him, he's going to sit and do nothing and take the and money. Lukaku is the type of striker that he does well in the right system. And well, I, I don't think Lukaku think you're not... do very. Well. I think we do very well in Italy. He could just bully everyone because he'd be bigger than all of them combined. Yeah. Other than potentially uh, Koulibaly, yeah. And if uh, and Na- if like Napoli want to make a clear signing or chase after the title, maybe sign Cavani. Unless you still have a lot or, of faith, faith in Milik. Or a Cardi, even. Oh, God, maybe they no. can get a Cardi. Just don't get a Cardi. He's no. a disgrace at this point. Let a Cardi go to China. A Cardi, yeah, exactly. Let's say, go, to like, China. go to China. Uh, go to the second division of China. If you're injured, you're in a tough position here because he would only probably want to go to an Italian team. So the only options would be Juve or, or Napoli. Juve don't want him. Juve could want him. <laughs> what, why? You never know. He could be, be the reason why Inter loses the league. I don't know. I wouldn't sign. If I was Juve, I wouldn't. What AC after. Milan? <laughs> they can't oh, sign anyone. They're just oh. a joke of a club. Piontek will lead them to glory. Yes. No. Yes. One hit wonder. Oh. <laughs> Okay, relax. All right, had to do that for All right, right, relax. He's 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 gonna he's gonna be. Yeah, he's the new number nine. Seventy goals for for Piontek next season. Seventy goals. That's right. Messi smashes Mohamed Salah's record. And well, Messi's like a hundred and something. I know. I know. Well, what right. else is there to talk well, about? Peter Crouch retired. It's a shame. Not many legends are retiring. I like Peter Crouch. Peter Crouch. Much. What's your favorite Peter Crouch memory? I don't have one don't have one either. Yeah, I'm I just use Chelsea days in general. I just I like, like his quotes. Chelsea days? Who did you did say? Did you say Chelsea? Peter Crouch. I was thinking Peter Czech. <laughs> Jesus, hell. <laughs> Jesus, hell. I was, I, was like, I was like, I don't really have... I was like, he retired months ago. Like, why are we talking about now? You retired? Yeah. Czech, I didn't even know yeah, he retired. Yeah, he's Arsenal's no, guy. No, he's Chelsea's. Chelsea's guy. Okay. Peter Crouch. Yes. What's his favorite moment? Any of his robot celebrations. I mean, that uh, Ah. Uh, I know, like some people love in the 2006 World Cup when he grabbed some the Trinidad bad Tobago's players, he like grabbed on them and scored a header. My favorite Peter Crouch goal was in the Champions League against Inter Milan when Gareth Bale was tearing down the left wing cross in, he slid in to poke home for Spurs. Great finish. My favorite was probably one of his goals in the run in 2007, where he was one of the top goal scorers in the Champions League. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, his bicycle kick for Liverpool. <laughs> That's actually a very good bicycle kick. And I'm pretty sure it was Peter Crouch. There's a story where uh, they were playing go there uh, on the go karts or whatever, mm-hmm. and um, his go kart was broken. And this was before the Champions League final, and uh, it was like, and he was gonna have to like crash into someone. And it was either like Xabi Alonso or Dirk Kout. So he took out Dirk Kout. <laughs> Dirk Kout. Oh because he was, because uh, Xabi Alonso was the more important one. Yeah. <laughs> Even though uh, Dirk Kout did score in that final. I mean, 
if you're into the soccer football podcast, check out Peter Crouch's podcast. It's yeah, pretty honestly. Good. It's pretty good. Um, What else? What else can we oh, chit-chat about? Well, Koscielny. Laurent Koscielny, the Arsenal captain. Not acting like a captain. He's basically gone on strike and is not playing for Arsenal anymore. He hasn't gone on their America, on their uh, preseason tour. Um, P- people were complaining about Pogba, but at least he showed up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, this guy is just like, no, you guys have betrayed me. I don't know. What was his issue? Apparently, he wants to leave the club and uh, Arsenal aren't letting him leave for free. They want... A fee? Why is he upset by that? I guess he just wants to leave. Is his contract out? No. Uh, so why would he be free? So apparently some some stories are saying that uh, Arsenal extended his contract because there's a clause by one year. Okay. Hmm. Uh, another story I think I read was that uh, they mutually agreed that they, could, they would let him leave at the end of the season. And that hasn't happened. And he went on strike. He didn't show up to the... Um, the airport where Arsenal were going to leave for America, mm-hmm. and now he's somewhere in Europe. I don't know, maybe France. I mean, um, Lauren Koscielny. If we're honest, he's probably well past his best. For sure. Do Arsenal really need him? Well, do you want to play Mustafi? Can they not just sign? They don't have many Let's options. Forgot, let's forget about signing Zaha. Let's keep our strike duo that are actually very good, and you know. Sign a defender or two. Yeah, not not Kieran Tierney. They're doing the opposite of Man United. Man United are making smart signings for once. Just for Arsenal's a joke of a club. I know. Okay. And so is United, but <laughs> yes, but <laughs> you know, Arsenal are not just. They're just not signing anybody that are. What is Unai Emery thinking? He's not the. I don't man think it's up charge. to him. It's not up to him. It's well, people that's a shame. The board is obviously holding. Oh. I mean. Look at Arsene Wenger. He wasn't allowed to sign players he wanted to sign. Do you think he wanted to sign Mustafi? I think that was an Arsene Wenger sign. At the time, Mustafi wasn't too bad. He was cracking the German national team. Yeah, he won a World Cup. Yeah. That's I don't right. care. Are, are we still talking about Arsenal? Yes. Okay. Why? Why, <laughs> why would you just change in a second there? Because five years ago, to, uh, yesterday, Germany won the World Cup in 2014. Congratulations. I remember that Germany. day. It was a good day. I wanted Argentina to win. It was not the best of finals. No. I was just glad to see Messi upset. I got um, Wow. I wanted Messi to win the World Cup, but at the same time, I really wanted Germany because I felt like that team as a whole deserved it kind of more than him. Yep. But, uh, you know, if it was any other team against Argentina, I would pick Argentina, but I was trying for Germany in that World Cup because too many legends to count. Mm-hmm. Whatever. But, um, but just to finish our Arsenal uh, conversation okay. here. Okay. Yes, they, I think they do need to sign a couple of players, a couple of defenders especially. You know, the SLF back, yes, a center back probably. Will they? Probably not. And will they suffer throughout the season? Probably. So we'll see what happens to Arsenal. You know, the Premier League transfer window closes, is it a month before the rest of Europe? Uh, it closes on just before the first day of the season. So, so less than four weeks. That's... Uh, not great. I mean, the time's counting down. These big deals for big clubs, they take a few weeks to get together, get the money, get this and everything. They're running out of days to make some signings. And they're, the targets they've been get, trying to get, like Saliba from St. Etienne, supposedly they might get gazumped by Tottenham. Gazumped. That's a word of the day. I'm sorry. I, I, I was like, what the hell is this man saying? But okay, yes. You know what gazumped I do, I do. Do you think... Spurs are going to get Giovanni Lo Celso. They might get him. They might get uh, If they Olmo. do, if they do get Giovanni Lo Celso, does that then put them within the top two or three of best midfields in the Premier League? I mean, you have Christian Eriksen, their top class talent. Ndombele, I'm an Ndombele <laughs> biased man, so yes. What, what, I don't like Christian Eriksen that why? much. I don't rate him as high He's as... He's better than Ozil. Well, yes. I feel like a local guy could be better than Ozil. He'll actually run and make a tackle. You know, Ozil, five years ago, Ozil... Mesut Ozil is one of the most technically gifted players I've ever seen. He's brilliant on the ball. He's brilliant intelligent-wise. He just has no drive, no heart. He's a, he's honestly the perfect Arsenal player. <laughs> brilliant, but also shit at yeah, the same time. Yeah, you're not, you're not wrong there. Yeah, I'm, I agree with Liam. I don't really rate Ericsson that highly compared to 
a lot of people. He's good. Yeah, he's a good player. But I don't think he's world class. I don't think he, I don't think he's within the conversation of top five attacking midfielders. In the world or in the Premier League? Both. I won't ask you who because I don't want you to think right now. I'll give Paul probably, honestly. Paul on his day is one of good. the best. He pisses me off. He's actually rather when he's decent. When he's on his game, he's like top three. He's pretty good. All right, so let's move on to Newcastle. David Silva, Bernardo Silva. <laughs> I'm just thinking midfielders now. Yes, Newcastle. The club's a tin pot. So apparently uh, Newcastle are going for Steve Bruce. <laughs> The Sheffield Wednesday it. manager. Not the worst decision. What? <laughs> they had Rafa Benitez. They let him walk out and go to China. Steve Bruce is a legend of the game. <sighs> He's a Premier League winner. They were linked with Steven Gerrard. I was like, are you shitting me right now? The guy's done nothing. <laughs> like. So he apparently agreed to join for a wage of $1 million a year compared to the predecessor, Rafa, who was making $6 million annually. <laughs> Would you actually pay Steve Bruce a million pound? I would offer him about $33 and a bag of chips. Like, Was his last Premier League team Hull City? Yes. Yes. And we all know how good they were. Loaded with talent. He was also Austin Villa manager, was he not? And how have they done? Oh, he, they fired him. Yep. And they got promoted. Yes. So basically, if you want to do well, Jeez. get rid of Steve Bruce. <laughs> not many options left. Oh man, yeah. You should have gone after Alan Pardew. No, David <laughs> just Moyes. For the, just for get the... David Moyes. Give it to Gigza. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, Don't man. want to do that. He's done, he hasn't done much with well, just Wales. Just give it to Gigza. But, um, yeah. I do worry Can for... Can we get him on the podcast? Not Gigza. What was that guy? Uh, what's, what's his first name? The, the, the United fan. Tate? A- Andy Tate. Andy Tate. Andy Tate. I would pay so much money to get that guy on this podcast. He podcast. would rip you a new one. It's okay. Be just hilarious. <laughs> just but, give it to Gigza. But from one to ten, how much do you worry about Newcastle? Oh, they're going down. Yeah, they might go down. <laughs> like I, I put in our group chat. I already started working on my Premier League prediction table for next year. Newcastle was one of the first teams I put on the list. Wow. In the bottom three. That's sad. I, I can't really disagree with you right now. Obviously, lots can change in a yeah. month, but I, what, what do you think is going to change? You're not going to go out and sign anyone fantastic. They're not going to get a great manager because they're not going to pay for it. Yeah, they're all, they've lost Perez. They don't have Rondon anymore. Uh, they're, they they're, have Almiron, but not not much else around him. They're going to be rough. Yeah, I do worry for them. Uh, for such a huge club with such a huge history and fan base, it's shocking to see how one guy, Mike Ashley, their owner, can just bring down an entire club. Just because he doesn't want to sell the club. Yeah, just because he, he wants more money than they're worth. And then... They're a yo-yo club at the moment. And then oh, if they get relocated, they're not going to be worth that much. No, not at all. And he won't be able to sell them for nope. that much. What else is on our list? Can we go to AFCON now? Or is there more transfers? Devok signed a new contract. Devok Origi. Ballon d'Or winner. <laughs> Calling it now. Mm. All right, but yeah, let's jump into AFCON because... Because, Boaz, congratulations. It's an amazing tournament. You have predicted the amazing run of Algeria. Yeah. We all kind of went... We made... Was it last episode or two episodes ago? I think it was last episode. Episodes. We talked about African Cup of Nations, and we said, okay, who's going to make it to the final? Who's going to win it? Me and Lucas both said Senegal, and yes, they are in the final, but, you know, they're one of the favorites of the tournament. Yeah. Boaz, kind of off the cuff, went... Algeria. <laughs> I said, other than Riyad Mahrez, who do they have? But it's okay. All they need is Riyad Mahrez. Yeah. Because he steps up today with a 96th minute free kick. Top bends. Breaks Nigerian hearts. They beat Ivory Coast. Now they beat Nigeria. Good run. Do you remember when Ivory Coast used to be decent? Cote d'Ivoire with the Toure's and Didier Drogba. And they have good players. Sado Dumbia. Sado Dumbia. <laughs> the FIFA legend himself. Yeah. <laughs> they, I mean, they have... Zaha. Zaha, Pepe. They got good players, but obviously they don't have like a world class player like Toure. Colo. Colo. Colo, Colo. He's very good. Colo, Colo. Colo, Colo. The shame you're doing the chance. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Toure. That's enough. The best. But so going into this final, what do you expect to happen? 
three two. Well, that doesn't really explain much. It will be a two one victory for Senegal. Senegal three two. I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't watch these teams. <laughs> He's got a point. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. We physically, Lucas, unless we illegally stream it, we physically cannot watch it. <laughs> sorry uh, you know if you're an African Cup of Nations fan or you're from any of these countries sorry we don't get it in Canada we don't get this coverage so unless we go online and find a stream mm-hmm. somewhere this is true we cannot watch these games yeah but but it'd be incredible when was the last time Algeria won the Cup of Nations I have not a clue well uh, I have I literally not the slightest of idea because, yeah, we didn't expect them to make the final. No. Well, except for Waz. Because other than Riyad Mahrez, who do they have? I, I'll tell you who they have. They Are got you, some very decent players. Are you going to tell me when the last time they won? Faguli. Yes. Benacer. Um, Mandy. Mbohi. Um, that's, I can't pronounce the other name. <laughs> Beltali. Beltali. Yes. Uh, Bench. Uh, Brahimi. He's okay. Unas, he plays for Napoli. Slimani. Is, yeah, Slimani. A, <laughs> that seems not... <laughs> it's something. Yeah, but hey, they, uh, beat, yeah. they, they beat Nigeria. Well, they, they deserve they to be Islam, in the final. Slimani. And, uh, and, you know, unfortunately, this has not been the uh, longest podcast we've had. Right, maybe Long- it is. Uh, I don't... Well, if we're looking at the... Cover, they won it in 1990. It's a while but, ago. Yeah. This the 90s were a good us. time. <laughs> All right, so moving on to the last story of the day, Marseille. <clears throat> yeah. Name you want to... Basically, Olympic Marseille, you know, they when do they where do they finish in the league on last year? Let me get that. Hold on. Just so I can... They did not have a good season. No, they didn't, but it's definitely continued. They were like seventh or something. I will get it right now. Wait, that doesn't tell me because that's from last year. Um... Why? Why would they do that to me? I will find it. Thank you, because I can't find it. Anyways. Olympic Marseille had a friendly... Fifth. fifth. Okay, so not terrible, but not great. But they had a friendly against Ackleton Stanley, who plays in the second division, which is third division, League 2, because Premier League Championship, and then League 1. It's the fourth tier. Yeah, because they just got promoted to League 1. Jesus, hell. So technically it's a third tier. Yes. So it's Premier League. Yes. I think okay. they got promoted. Anyways. Anyways. They played a friendly, which I mean, odd choice of teams. But hey, Marseille, easy game, warm up game, go out and beat them 7-0 kind of thing. Except, Akers and Stanley won 2-1. <laughs> Absolute scenes. And then Marseille go on today and lose 4-0 to Rangers. This Marseille is are getting relegated. A joke of a club. And the bigger thing is, it's not like they played a bad team against Akers and Stanley. It was their full squad. Jeez. It was? Yes. I even made a point of looking at it and finding the starting 11. It's a joke. Let me let me try to find that here so I can back up my uh my point here. Do, 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 do. Talk about something. I don't know what to... I'm trying to find it here. I gotta go back a while on Twitter. Okay, well... Um, obviously, Marseille have been struggling. They have been spending a lot of money on players that haven't really been really up to the level. If They, they can't really sack their manager because that would cost them a lot of money as well. Okay, I got, I got They're the... kind of screwed financially and they definitely need to sell some players... There's a lot more brighter futures for other League 1 teams compared to Marseille, which is very sad to see for such a historic club. Some notable names in the starting eleven would be Luis Gustavo. Uh, Dimitri Payet was there. Kamara. And then second half is a complete, almost different starting eleven. Uh, Thoven, their big new money signing. He was he's sort not, of... He's been there for a few years. Oh, he's a big money signing for them. Uh, Kevin Strootman was playing. Mm-hmm. Decent players. Yeah. They lose 2-1 to Akin and Stanley. So uh, there's that. Oh. You know, it sucks for Marseille, but hey. if you, I don't know. I can't really think of a cliche to say No, right honestly, now. yeah. Yeah, bad, uh, bad time. Is that uh, all for the podcast today? Actually, there's 
One more thing. Just one more thing. I'll be right back. Your moment of reckoning has arrived. Am I being pied? Fantastic. <laughs> Did you actually like work this out? Potentially. That's fantastic. It's fantastic. Dun dun. It's dun, actually fantastic. Dun, 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 dun. I'm not prepared for this. Lucas has waited many moments for this. That's fantastic. Man. I'm very uh, proud of you. Should we do it in here? You, or should you we do it do outside? It. You, Lucas, I don't you, want to you mess with him. You him. No, you, you, no, you, Waz, you do it. You, you're the reason why this is... I don't, I don't care. You pie. I don't want to well, be a part of this. Yes. Can we explain, oh, please, just... why I'm being pied? I will insert the clip now. Uh, Aaron Ramsey could be on the move to PSG. If this happens... Liam is not If fond, this happens, though. Waz, I'll make a deal. If Aaron Ramsey goes to PSG, you could toss a pie in my face, okay? <laughs> Done. <laughs> you, okay. I, on the table. Done. Well, that should be fun. Not happening. What if he goes to Juventus? Interesting. What, Lucas, we what if he goes to Juventus? You can pie me as well. Because <laughs> Aaron Ramsey does not deserve to go to any of those clubs. I'm going to need a... Uh... Do you have a towel for him? I'm going to need a towel. I will get a towel. <laughs> can you use the towel first? Yes. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to go well. That's a nice shirt I'm wearing. <laughs> When was this planned? This idea. When was this planned? <laughs> and you're just like, hey, I'm gonna pie this kid today. Okay, wait, wait. Let me just get this. Don't splash ever. I don't wanna. This is the thing. <laughs> uh, that's why I moved the carpet away. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> Are uh, you ready? Yes. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Whoa, whoa, wait. Yeah, yeah, you gotta stand. Mean, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> Do not. Should hit like, comment, subscribe, and uh, peace out. <laughs> Play Mary Ramsey. Jesus. <laughs>